Today we are taking a look at Marvel Boy. Marvel Boy reads, After each turn, give three of your one cost cards plus one power. In the week that Marvel Boy was released, he was joined in his spotlight caches with both Red Hulk and the Blob. I took the cue from that release week and built this deck. With Blob, you only want your other big power cards to have a maximum of 12 power. That way you increase the ability of Blob to grow in size. Red Hulk is one of those cards who also can just gain an immense amount of power on his own. There's also Scar, Mockingbird, Eliath. When you're using this deck, you will probably have priority. And of course, Eliath is just great at shutting down your opponent's game plan when you have priority. And Cullopsidian who is our fifth big power card in this deck. Squirrel Girl just provides a lot of targets for Marvel Boy to hit, in addition to activating your Cull Obsidian. Spider Ham is just super disruptive, so I threw him in the deck. Echo allows you to either snipe other ongoing cards from your opponent, or just play her down and control where your opponent can play their ongoings. Kyera protects both our one cost and our six cost cards, which this deck has plenty of. She really is super important in this deck. You might be able to get away with armor, but Kyera is going to be your main choice. And what deck wouldn't be complete without Shang-Chi? You will hear me call him Sean a lot. That is a reference to his movie. So don't get lost if you hear me say Sean a lot, it's Shang-Chi. Weird decks is what this channel is about. So let's get to the gameplay. Okay, next up we have Thunder. Well, first up, I edited out a bot game. We might be going up against Hella. I will get Squirrel Girl down now. Into Marvel Boy is fantastic on turn three. I probably... Oh, this is death. Uh, this is destroy. So I definitely need Kyera. And I may need to get her down on turn three. And the reason I say this is destroy is because of Nico. Hella does not run Nico. Okay. What is this spell? But it's the double spell? That's weird to play in destroy. They passed. I think they want me to have priority. So I will play the Kyera down because I'm I'm a scaredy pants. They did not play Killmonger. So I could have gotten the Marvel Boy down. Mm, impressed. I definitely need to change my underwear. Getting their death is kind of nice. Okay, now I will definitely get down Marvel Boy now. And then Spider Ham, Marvel Boy is gonna move to the middle. I also have Echo to control where they can play their null. Playing more than one one cost card or having more than one on the board, you might have to be a little careful with Marvel Boy. Nice, we took out their death. Okay. I could also play games with the null potentially. Nothing to play on turn five. I'm gonna play games. So I'm gonna play the Echo over here. Are they going to have priority or me? Let's see. They will have priority. What a game! Okay, and a six Rest power dead in peace. I can still only play one card. Is this a Zola? Do I move the Echo? I don't know what to do. I I think I move the Echo. Do I just load up a bunch of power? And what do they have? They do have a Deadpool, but they don't have the extra energy to play them? This is just a pure guessing game. Is this a Zola deck or is this not a Zola deck? Do they move the Venom? Do they keep the Venom? Oh, wow. We snuck out of there. They were scared with New York as well. Or maybe they didn't draw into the pieces they wanted to. With Echo on the board, that's a huge unknown. Am I going to leave it if they wanted to play Null? Or am I going to move it? I was willing to stick it out for one additional cue. They were not. So, 
I get the dub. Okay, next up we have Lulo. We have our big power cards. Somewhat unfortunately. I will just play out the spider ham middle. Me taking a rock is okay. Looks like we're going up against bounce with that bishop hit. Very good hit. Perfect into Asgard because I can throw down a cull. So we will continue to not do much. There is my Mockingbird bye-bye. <laughs> so much for her. And the, the rock. So I will just throw down a Kyera. Do I really try hard for the draw? I think I try really hard to draw. So I'll play Kyera mid and then play Cull mid as well. And go away from the blob line. My next turn though, I'm not sure. Okay, my first game fighting against the new Hawkeye. There's the call. Scar is very nice. So I think I play for two locations, of course. And I think it's just slamming Scar. I, they don't have a bishop. What are their big... What are their big power cards? Because they could easily overtake me middle is the issue. So let's see. Oh, nice. They plugged me middle. Okay. And a demon. Okay, so they can play the demon... They can play the demon left. Do they play for middle? That is the big question. They only need to play one demon left. I think we go for tiebreaker. And I just play the Eliath. Because they can get up to 12 and then... But they need another spot for another card. If it's a hit monkey, we have priority and we nuke it with the Eliath. But they could go hit monkey middle. The reason I'm playing it this way is I am fine going to tiebreaker. Even though it's a bounce list, bounce decks typically don't have a lot of power. So I'd wager their hood and hit monkey potentially are the only bigger power cards they have. So so again, if they go hit monkey middle, uh-oh. Okay, tiebreaker it is. No rocket and the demon. So we have eight. And the hit monkey middle. Can they get us by eight? They cannot. This is why I went to tiebreaker. Perfect example. I'm, I'm glad this happened so I can show you all, really dive into this thought process. Clearly, if I had played Eliath right, I would have lost. They would have one left. Would they have one left? Well, hold on. 11? Yes, yes, yes. Of course. It says 13 right there. <laughs> so they would have one left. They would have won middle by one. This is why I was comfortable with it going to tiebreaker because their biggest card is exactly what I said before they made the play. Hit Monkey and Demon were their bigger cards. And so I need to force this to go into a tiebreaker just to be on the safer side. So that is exact the exact plan I executed and it worked to perfection. Alrighty, next up we have Propheta 22. A four power squirrel girl is never a bad thing. Play her middle because I play into unrevealed locations. They have a normal deck and the uh, Conquest app infinite avatar. So not a bot. Uh, getting a Sentinel. This is why I say patience as well. If I had waited till turn two, I could have got a Sentinel and played that down to further discount the Mockingbird. 
but that's okay. We will make do. I still do not know what deck I'm playing against. Kyera is the only play here. My next turn will be Mockingbird, probably. Mockingbird, definitely. <laughs> Because she is a six cost card, so she is protected by Kyera. So getting her down early is fine. I will get her down middle, and I still don't know what deck I'm running against. I'm gonna snap. They haven't done much, and I'm about to unleash a bunch of power onto them. And I don't want them to be able to escape with just a single cube. So I'm in a advantage position. Nocturne, okay. So Surfer maybe. Get down Scar next. Again, he is protected. And then next is probably... Oh, they have a Red Hulk. So let's see. Where could they play their Red Hulk? It will be a tie and a tie. I have priority. I think I do a really weird thing and play Red Hulk middle. My thought process behind that is them moving the Nocturne. If they move the Nocturne, it goes into tiebreaker. But I think I'm okay with a tiebreaker. I'm not going to run that exact math. And this is a funky deck they're running. Claw, Makari, Nocturne. I am not familiar with it. Okay, they were they were scared as well. I decided to attack just two locations again because if they move their nocturne it goes into a tiebreaker or or they move their nocturne and they play Red Hulk right, which means they win right, no problem. And that's why I'm playing Red Hulk middle because if they slide their nocturne left, that's not enough power. It's 11, which means they'd have to slide their nocturne middle. And Nocturne Middle is not going to beat this Red Hulk. So ultimately, I am fine again with it going to a tiebreaker if that's the route my opponent wants to take. Otherwise, I'm comfortable enough playing this out just because this deck can output a ton of power. Alrighty, next up we have Mystery. Squirrel Girl down middle. This Krakoa is going to pop off because that is where I will be slamming Cull. That is no problem. Deep space in the middle. End my turn again. They do have the Deadpool avatar. Seven cards in deck. They are destroy. Ugh. I mean... Sorry, Marvel Boy, but this is where you're going. I can't play you into deep space. I need the to play Cole into Krakoa. I really need Kyera this game, but she will hide in the bottom of my deck, I guarantee it. Okay, so Marvel Boy will die. Yes, Marvel Boy will end up dying. I I really think I want to snap into this. Because this next card is going to be low low cost in all likelihood. So I will slam a call down. This is supposed to be Marvel Boy gameplay and uh <laughs> I have just sacrificed Marvel Boy into Hala. His sacrifice was not in complete vain. I did get three power out of him that will survive. Oh, uh, maybe he'll live. He will not live. <laughs> Goodbye, Marvel Boy. And our... Yikes. So I think I will get Mockingbird down here. We will see what they decide to do here. 
Squirrel Girl and Venom. They never played into Krakoa. I mean, you're not gonna Zola me. And I can't play... I couldn't get Scar down to free. Middle is a wrap. They're not gonna play Null here if that's the route they want to go. So Echo just absolutely obliterates a Null. I don't see how I lose this. Uh, Killmonger? Not even Killmonger should do... Killmonger does take me out. Killmonger? No. Yes? <laughs> okay. They went Killmonger. Yeah, 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 they went Killmonger. Yeah, Killmonger took me out. I should have done Sean and Scar. Man. I'm leaving this in. They can they can have the victory. <laughs> Gloat all they want. Uh, this this was very winnable, as you see. I do not listen to my own advice, and this is a prime example of it. They went the Killmonger route, so I should have just slammed Scar, done a Sean and a Scar, and called it a day. I was afraid of Null, which I probably shouldn't have been. So I probably should have done a Sean right and a Scar middle to guard against them playing null left. So that ultimately was the right play. I saw it and I just uh, changed my mind and I paid the price. Next up we have Bellerin. Westview is the first location, so that will continue to be unknown. We are patient to see what the second location is. Our patience is rewarded. Uh, I have no clue. We'll spread these this way. We hit their death lock, so they will be doing none of that. We will not draw into Kyera because that is a rule. If you play against Destroy, you will not draw Kyera. There is Marvel Boy. We will play him down. If I draw Kyera, I definitely prioritize her. But right now, I think I just slam a Cull? I don't think it matters. Slam a Cull, and then potentially a Mockingbird, but that might be taken away from me this turn. If we draw, we... Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on. Undo. I definitely want to play Mockingbird in case I draw into Kyera. And she can protect. They're the same power. So I definitely want to be able to protect cards, as many cards as I can with Kyera. There's the Killmonger. And also, now I can play a one-cost card later for my call. So we did draw into Kyera. There is the Echo. Snap? I think I will snap. I can play... Oh, now there's no need to even play Kyera. I can take Scar down to two. So if I play Echo here... No, I can't play Echo there. I need to play Echo middle. And then I can take... There's the death. Okay. Ooh, Elysium. Okay, so they can't play no middle. We can sneak our Scar in here. Who has priority? They have priority. We're already winning middle, actually. So I can do Kyera, Sean, Scar. We'll put Sean last for the dramatic flair. And even if they do have Sean, they shouldn't be able to. Well, they can't Sean me. Wait, am I playing Kyra this turn? Yes. So they could Sean me right, but that means in all likelihood I would win middle. The scar is totally unexpected. 
Scar is not a popular card. So when you don't use popular cards, it's easy to have people not even think about them and think I can put 11 power into the big house on the last turn. They are thinking, do they want to retreat? And I think they made the wrong choice. What did you do? <sighs> they definitely made the wrong choice. <laughs> Echo is invisible. This will, uh, honestly, this will have to do, I guess, for the Marvel Boy game. I'm so sorry, my deepest apologies. I just am running out of time and I cannot get Marvel Boy to appear when I'm recording during testing. And you could see how this game plays out, right? Whenever I had Marvel Boy early, I played against Destroy and I never had Kyera. And when I didn't play against Destroy, Marvel Boy stayed at the bottom of my deck. So it was just a bad run of bad luck to for Marvel Boy while I was recording. Now, while I was, the reason I made the video is because while I was testing, I found that you get a lot of value from Marvel Boy. You don't need to commit heavily with a zoo deck. Zoo works fine. I'm sure you've seen a hundred Marvel Snap Marvel Boy Zoo deck videos, or, or at least thumbnails for them. Everybody's making them. You're not gonna find that here. Marvel Boy can work exceptionally well at just giving this small incremental power in all lanes, especially when combined with Squirrel Girl, that it just becomes super tough for your opponent to push over the top in two of those lanes, especially while you are slamming down Scars and Culls and Mockingbirds and Blobs and Elias. It's just a lot to manage. And then you also have Sean. So if you can't Elioth, then you can just Sean their big stuff. And Marvel Boy honestly fits well into that with these one cost cards. And also you have the synergy with Cole that has synergy with one cost cards. Echo, as you can see, is just super powerful in dictating where they can play, especially in combination with locations. You're just gonna have to take my word for it or this theoretical situation right here. Imagine they didn't have Killmonger or they played him after I was able to play my Kyera. That Marvel Boy can be effective in a deck like this and he was during my testing. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a nice clean game of that while I was recording. But otherwise, let's get to the wrap up. So as of this recording, I started at rank 70 and I hit 83 over the course of testing and this recording that you got to see. So at least in my experience, this deck can be used to climb. I get a fair amount of bots. When I make videos, I cut out all of the bot games because those are just useless. I play bots that let me win. But against humans, this deck is able to win and you got to see plenty of examples of that in this gameplay and I got to see plenty of it during testing. Marvel Boy is an asset. You didn't get to see much of that during this gameplay, unfortunately. But he does work in this deck and is strong. There are plenty of substitutions you can make. Ultimately, just replace big power cards with other big power cards. Replace one cost cards with other one cost cards. And there are plenty of Marvel Boy decks, other decks, if you are interested in playing him, but not this specific version. I, of course, cannot forget all of the people that have watched to the end of the video. You, specifically. Yes, you. Thank you for making it this far. It really helps the channel grow. It's a free, great way to help me out. The channel is experiencing so much success, and it's thanks to people like you. Also, big thanks to my viewers. I have a handful of them, a tiny handful as of this recording, and I appreciate the support that you give as well. That also I do not take for granted, and I just appreciate all of the love, all of the comments, uh, all of the interaction I have with, with the viewers that have decided to reach out to me. It is a blast, and I am enjoying myself, and that's what's important. Until next time.